Haley Davis is an excellent runner, but she never runs away, not even from cancer. She has an incredible story about uh, her battle with that disease and what she's doing with the results of it. Haley, thank you so much for joining me, joining me to tell me about this. Um, can you tell me about the about when you heard that you had cancer? Yeah, for sure. So um, in the summer of 2019, um, towards the end of the summer, kind of in the middle of summer, I was um, getting these really bad migraines. Um, I was seeing double vision. I was having really bad nausea, like I was throwing up. Um, and we kind of always thought it was just from like days in the sun and like heat stroke and all that. But then my double vision kind of stuck with me for a few days. So I knew that something was not right. Um, so then um, I went to the eye doctor and they saw, took a picture of my retina and they saw some swelling behind or they saw some swelling on my optic nerve. So they sent me to the ER um, where I had CAT scan and that's when I found out that I had a brain tumor. And so I had, I got sent to the Master Children's Hospital and I had surgery um, pretty much right away within 48 hours. Um, and then, yeah, I got it removed. Um, and then we kind of didn't really know if it was benign or not. Um, but then we got results in a, um, we got results a few weeks later. Um, and yeah, so then I found out that it was a stage two tumor. Um, and sorry, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, how big was the tumor they took out of your brain? Um, it's about the size of um, an egg, <laughs> so it's fairly large. <laughs> so they took out, uh, you know, a cancerous tumor from your brain. Uh, how did you respond to that? Um, well, you know, I was feeling, honestly, I was feeling pretty good when it was out because it was like gross total resection. So they did think that they got it all out. Um, and so my recovery was going super well. And honestly, I just was, I just felt super grateful that they were mm -hmm. able to remove it all or so they thought. Um, and so let me just ask about that. So you've got the brain tumor removed. You're also a very talented runner. You were feeling scholarships from people in the States as well. Uh, what did you decide to do with that aspect of your life after the surgery? Well, so that was in my senior year of high school. And so I still was kind of uh, figuring out where I wanted to go for university. So I actually, um, I did, I believe it was three visits. Um, uh, so I was still visiting the States and visiting kind of out West and doing tours um, during kind of my recovery process and all the coaches were aware. Um, and so I was still kind of deciding where I wanted to go and um, University of Guelph just happened to be one of my options. And I initially didn't really think that I wanted to come to Guelph, but um, it ended up being the right decision for me. So now I'm at the University of Guelph, but yeah. So during my recovery is when I was kind of deciding where to go and all that. So I was traveling a bit, running a bit, <laughs> I was a bit busy. <laughs> So you, you managed to stay home and stay in our healthcare system, which I wouldn't be surprised if that had something to do with it. Uh, you ran in the fall, you're doing school, and then you got the rest of the news. What what news did you get and when did you get it? Yeah, so around Christmas time, um, Christmas Eve actually, so I was getting regular MRI checkups just because they wanted to watch um, watch the area and just kind of for this reason to kind of make sure nothing was growing back. But then um, surprisingly, we did get word that there were some residual cells. Um, and so then at the end of January, I had a second craniotomy. Um, and then about two weeks ago, I finished my last treatment of radiation. So cancer twice, mm -hmm. you're not even 20 years old yet. <laughs> twice they've gone into your brain to remove material mm -hmm. and those are heady conversations to have, but being, you know, an athlete uh, and resilient, you've decided to uh, not just let that be something bad that happened in your life. What are you doing now? Yeah, so um, May 1st, which is Brain Cancer Awareness Month, um, I'll be running 150 kilometers over the course of five days, so 30K each day. Um, in raising money for the Terry Fox Foundation um, and the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada. So I'm very excited about that. <laughs> and, you know, what do you call the campaign? Uh, Strides and Smiles. <laughs> so you're running, where are you running? I'm running along the Guelph to Goddard Rail Trail. So um, I grew up um, a little bit in Goddard and a little bit in Guelph. So I thought it was pretty fitting. Um, so I'll be running along the rail trail. So you run along this rail trail. It's 150 kilometers that you're going to be running, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how are you going to manage that? 
How's that going to work? Um, so it'll be 30K each day. And so um, I'm going to break it up into two runs each day. So two times 15K. So I'll run 15K in the morning, take a little bit of a break, and then run 15K in the afternoon, and then rest up and do it again <laughs> five days in a row. So what are you going to do when you stop each day? Um, when I stop, so I'll have um, like a bit of a bit of a hefty meal so um pasta and chicken and kind of all of that um and then i'll rest for a couple hours and then probably just kind of honestly like in the car just like walk around a bit um and then i'll continue and but at the end of the day oh <laughs> where do you uh, sleep yeah so i'll actually for the first um few days i'll actually just drive back to guelph my um my mom's gonna pick my dad and i up where we stop i will drive back to guelph um i'll take an ice bath roll out make sure i'm feeling pretty good um and then i'll do it again and then the last two days we're gonna stay at um a hotel near goddard we were gonna stay with some friends because we have friends there but due to the lockdown that kind of put a little mm -hmm. we had to change plans so I'll, we'll be in a hotel and how's your dad participating in this um, he'll be biking with me the whole way. <laughs> so your dad's biking. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and so people can donate to this. Mm -hmm. Let's put bring this in. So there's a way for you to donate. It's Strides and Smiles. I understand you started out with a goal of $10,000. You're almost at $20,000. Where is this money going to go? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this money is going to go to the Terry Fox Foundation um, and then the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada. So I'm going to divide it between the two Um foundations well and sorry when do you when does the race start again may 1st may 1st so people just have uh a few days to start making donations and mm -hmm. help you help people who have been in your situation yeah so that's ultimately why i'm doing this is that i just i really do feel so fortunate that i'm able to run and i'm able to do throughout this these last couple of years i've I've recovered fairly well and I've been able to do so many things that I know a lot of people can't and a lot of people are in worse situations. And so I'm just, I feel so fortunate. And so I'm just hoping this is my way of kind of giving back and just being able to help those people who are not as fortunate really. What, you've been through this twice. What do you want people to know about this experience? Um, like this experience as in? Experience of surviving cancer. Yeah. Um, well, really, honestly, every story is different. And I think that really you can't compare, like everyone's going through their own struggles. And so you can't really compare yours to one another, but it is important to just kind of look at, it is important to look at things from others' perspectives in order to find the light in yours, if that makes sense. I think just kind of seeing the good and having a positive mindset is really crucial. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, it goes back to kind of Terry's, like Terry Fox's goal was a world without cancer. And he brought, he brought forward kind of, he really started a really big foundation towards cancer research and made people really aware of cancer and just, just aware that it can, that one, two Canadians are affected by cancer and it's, it, there's no cure for cancer. So, I mean, I'm just really hoping this is kind of just, yeah, a way that we can kind of still further cancer research and also help those in need, like further, um, like help with patient care and just um, patients living with cancer and all of that. Yeah. Well, Haley, just kudos to you for taking a, a negative and a a very difficult situation and turning it into a positive. Uh, very inspiring. We're going to put the link for the uh, GoFundMe page um, in the comments. And with this post, uh, really encourage people to take your lead and do something to help. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.